Okay, so welcome to the Bookmap Platform Details webinar. This is Bruce at uh, Bookmap. Risk disclaimer here, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss, is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. For more information, go to bookmap.com, become a member there, or uh, start the free trial. Uh, and then you're able to access um, not only book map uh, for 14 days for free, uh, but all of the uh, resources, including the advanced uh, webinar series. So in this webinar here at 1030 Eastern time, we go through um, a lot of questions or just some of the details that the book map is showing you and displaying. Uh, and that's just the first step. Uh, the next step is uh, once you have Bookmap and you're using it, uh, you want to understand exactly how to use it. Uh, and then we go through that in detail uh, at 11 o'clock Eastern uh, for the uh, 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 the advanced analysis, Okay, looking at the live markets, uh, understanding what's going on, what Bookmap is displaying, and uh, how to uh, start to anticipate uh, price movement. Okay, so let's jump in here. Let me let me show you uh, where you can find Bookmap if you want to give it a try. Uh, you go to bookmap.com. Okay, let's click on Explore. Uh, there's a few intro videos here, but let's go down to the pricing, and uh, this is where you can find it if you want to give it a try. Uh, there's the basic and the advanced versions, and that's it. Uh, 49 and 99 per month. They are billed quarterly, uh, and uh, and you get a 14-day trial period. Okay, the difference between these two is one is the ability to trade right from the bookmap chart, which is a very nice feature, and the other is these bookmap add-on indicators that are more focused for uh, this uh, order flow and high-frequency environment. Uh, now, there's other uh, two at basic and advanced over here. They're just packaged with a DX feed. Now DX feed is a new offering here um, that we've partnered with um, Dev Experts, uh, and we're able to offer U.S. equities now in Bookmap. Okay, so uh, it's the DX feed is not a feed for futures. It's only for the um, uh, for the U.S. equities. Okay, and you also get a 14-day trial period of those. Now, if you have the book map advanced or basic uh, currently, or if you want to give those a try, uh, you can add on the DX feed later if you like, or uh, just immediately after if you like. Uh, so this is just a package deal. That's the only difference here. Uh, okay, so, um, uh, and you will need to have uh, your own um, uh, data provider or broker, uh, and these are the ones that we support here. So for, through stage five, you have CQG, Rhythmic, Gain Capital, uh, also through uh, Ninja Trader 7 and 8, uh, also the API in uh, uh, TT, X Trader Pro, uh, as well as the API in Interactive Brokers, Traders Workstation. Okay, the rest are just data feeds, uh, like IQ feed, uh, Transact, uh, gain, CQG, and Rhythmic. Uh, so Bookmap is a true platform. Uh, we're not an indicator or some derivative of price. In fact, we're just a, a very objective view of the marketplace, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay, if you want to also follow us here on Twitter, uh, this you'll get the most up-to-date information here. Uh, and then uh, the uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and any uploaded videos, you'll be the first to know uh, here. All right, so if you want to review some of the uh, webinars uh, as well, uh, this is where you'll find them. So if you're new here, first, I would recommend watching some of the features and components here to understand uh, what's going on in Bookmap, what it's offering, uh, and then maybe just watch a couple of these uh, order flow video snippets. These are the concepts we go uh, over in much more detail during the advanced webinar. Um, and um, and then you'll find the selected webinars down here. So I've included a few uh, of the uh, advanced webinars here as well. So you can watch those and get a feel for what the, that, um, that session uh, offers you. Uh, let's see here, Ralph. Uh, good morning, Ralph. Um, can you get a long-term bookmap chart? Well, you can open up your bookmap and you can start recording your data beginning of the week and just leave it open. Uh, but uh, that's uh, uh, that's about it. 
at the moment. The um, uh, there's so many data points here. It's not just open, high, low, close of a of a time period, which is only four data points. Uh, in book map within within that candlestick, we're showing uh, potentially you know uh, thousands, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of data points, depending on that candlestick. Uh, so um, uh, it's uh, it's a lot more intensive, uh, and that's exactly what I'm going to cover here. So uh, let me jump into that. Okay, and uh, let's take a look at the Nasdaq. Uh, and um, so you're looking at the, at the book map interface here, uh, but uh, it might look a little foreign to you um, if uh, you're not accustomed to looking at it. So let's uh, drill down here and start taking some layers of data off, and then uh, I'll show you exactly what book map is displaying. Okay, I'm going to put a candlestick chart on here. And we take the volume dots off, the best bid and offer off. Okay, and let's zoom out. Okay, let's, uh, oh, we can stay with a five minute chart, that's fine. Uh, okay, so here we have five minutes of data per uh, candle. And, uh, uh, you know, candlestick chart is, uh, is pretty good. Like I said, it's only four points of data, but uh, we're so accustomed to reading them. Uh, you can see the wicks, the bodies, and start to understand the pressure uh, in the uh, in the marketplace, uh, not really able to read too much into this one here, uh, as we can see, it's just kind of going both ways. But uh, uh, there's a problem here uh, with the candlestick chart: is those four data points are uh, really misleading, and we're making financial trading decisions based on uh, very very limited data here. Uh, so uh, Bookmap uh, will uh, will solve that issue for you by showing you. Uh, all of the trading activity, as well as where they're bidding and offering uh, in the chart. Okay, so uh, let's first start with just the historical best bid and offer, and you'll see what I mean here. Okay, all right. So all I've done now in, on this five-minute candlestick chart here is overlaid the um, historical best bid and offer, right? And we can already see the uh, difference here. Uh, we, we're starting to uh, see the emergence of microstructures in specific areas. And this is really insightful information. Just this alone, without any traded volume whatsoever, I can see a structure here. I can see a breakout of that structure. I see another structure up here. I see a breakdown of that. We have another structure here. Here's a head and shoulders, for example. You would have missed that uh, on your candlestick. All right. So uh, there's also a reverse head and shoulders down here. So uh, we'll, we'll take a look uh, maybe uh, uh, in a little more depth, uh, especially I'm, I'm going to cover that in the advanced uh, webinar. And I can give you a link to that if you want to go come to the uh, advanced webinar uh, as well. Okay. So uh, now there's still a lot of data that is missing here, and that's not giving us uh, insight to the trader activity. Uh, and we want to know that. We want to understand where traders are committed uh, in this marketplace. Uh, the traded volume, where is it? Uh, well, we have a, a volume subchart, which is helpful. You can see there's a bit of a volume spike down here at the low. Uh, and um, uh, But that's it, though. We don't know uh, what type of volume it was. Was it aggressive buying or selling? We don't know where it took place uh, on the candlestick chart. We don't know the time uh, exactly when it took place uh, either. Uh, so, um, and, and how it uh, 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 took place within these microstructures. Okay, so let's uh, turn on the volume dots and let's take a look here. All right, now we have a much clearer picture of where traders are uh, committed. So we can look here and we can see that there's uh, a very, very quick move down, but not too much traded volume on this move down. Okay, volume started to, to pick up down in this area here. We get a retest uh, back to where we broke from, and then we continue on to the downside. So let's uh, let's zoom into this little area here, uh, and let's take a look at this uh, uh, this little bottom. Okay, so what I want to show here on the historical best bid and offer is the type of volume we're displaying. You can see uh, the green dots here. Uh, this is an aggressive market order that transacted on the historical best offer, the red line. Uh, the red dot is a market aggressive market sell order. 
that uh, transacted on the best bid and it took liquidity off of the best bid. So the aggressor is always taking liquidity. Uh, the um, uh, limit orders are providing liquidity. Okay, so that's what we're displaying. Now, uh, what about the pie display as you can see here? Uh, well, there's so much trading activity here that we can't display it all. Uh, it is better to give you the overall delta of what occurred here, and you can see that the majority of it is selling. If I zoom into this area, we'll get the complete picture here. Uh, and uh, and you can see uh, the, um, the aggressive selling here, a little bit of buying, and then uh, uh, some more selling. Now, uh, this is not uh, the greatest example. There's some lag here uh, and latency. I mean, we're down at millisecond level here. Or I'm sorry, we're down at microsecond level here. Uh, so we're talking millions of seconds. Uh, and you can see there's a lag between best bid and offer and the traded volume. Okay, but we'll go with the transactions. So we know that uh, at this point down here, the uh, the best bid was down here. Uh, and then uh, and then it flipped over uh, to, to the upside. All right, so uh, we can see the, the aggressive buying that took place here. So uh, at this point here, the best offer was down here. So a lot of a lot of lag actually in this particular example. Um, but um, anyway, as I start to zoom out, note how okay all of this trading activity okay which is algorithmic as you can see here. Look at the spacing and timing uh, of some of these trades here. Uh, and um, uh, as I zoom back out, note how I'm consolidating visually and just visually aggregating all of this trade activity together. Okay, and note how it all becomes into uh, a larger dot. Okay, and it gives me the overall. So I understand there was more selling than buying here. So that's what we're displaying. Uh, and uh, now we have a, a much clearer picture between this five minute period here. Okay, each vertical dotted line is a, um, uh, a minute of data, uh, and I can start to understand exactly what occurred. Okay, look at the cluster of uh, selling that took place down here, and uh, this is bearish activity. In fact, we get price discovery to the downside. Uh, we do get a nice little retest back to where we broke from up here, uh, and then we get the continuation to the downside. Okay. All right, so um, that's the volume. Uh, now let's go back to the current market and uh, understand what's going on. Another piece of the puzzle here to understand in order flow is the limit order book. Where are traders lining up to provide liquidity? Uh, this gives us insight to the current state of the market. Okay, We want to understand where there's high liquidity uh, and um, uh, where the, uh, the possible targets, where the market can trade, or maybe a possible skew in the uh, in the auction here that uh, uh, repels price uh, away. And this is a, a, a distinction between um, longer term high liquidity and shorter term high liquidity that we cover in more detail in the in the advanced session. Uh, so uh, we'll just start with the basics here, uh, and uh, we can see here at 58.51. There's pretty high liquidity. It's the highest in the book, okay? And they just pulled that liquidity. So as you can see here, there's a problem it, right with this example uh, that um, uh, once that liquidity shows up uh, and then is pulled, we have no rec record or understanding of what occurred, okay? It's fleeting. Uh, it's no longer available to us. And that's the issue here. And that's the problem with the current order book. Okay, so uh, Bookmap solves that issue by uh, recording that data. Okay, and the way we do it here is within this window. Here's our best bid and offer in the current market right now. Okay, and this number here is the last traded volume. All right, so let's um, turn on the uh, liquidity map. So the heat map is how we do it. Okay, so what, what we do is we, we take these numeric values here in the uh, limit order book, okay, your dome, uh, and we paint the areas um, a, a grayscale heat map. If it's, it's high liquidity, uh, it will get uh, a bright area here. Uh, if it's uh, less, as you can see in some of these areas, uh, it gets a, you know, a darker shade of, uh, of gray. So we can understand the commitment of some of these traders, or at least some of their intent. Uh, in some of these areas, okay, and that's what we want to understand. Now, um, 
where it gets interesting is we, we you can see the, the heat map changing as well as the numeric values changing. Where it gets interesting is we take this data and then it, we record it and transpose it onto the chart historically here. All right, so now you can understand exactly what occurred, not only with the traded volume here in bookmap, but you can also understand now the intent of these traders in the limit order book. And this gives you a lot of insight. You don't have to remember now uh, there was, uh, you know, 150 contracts up here uh, at a specific level. Uh, you've got it recorded. Okay. In fact, you can use the um, data tip tool here. Uh, and uh, you can hover over these areas and it gives me the date, the exact time, uh, down to the millisecond. And then uh, it tells me the liquidity here. So you can see the uh, on the ask here, the liquidity was 71 at this uh, 58, 59 level. Okay. Note these little striations right here. It got darker and then it got brighter. This is the pulling of liquidity when it got darker. So we went from 71 contracts down to 67, 65, 66. And then they started to bump it back up to 73, 77, 80. Uh, etc. Now we're starting to understand uh, the auction here on the offer and note how they actually got pretty aggressive right in this little area. Okay, they, they, they brought the offer down. They wanted to be sellers at a lower level okay, and lower yet. Okay, and we can also see where they transacted. Okay, so now we're getting an understanding of where price is getting absorbed by the limit orders uh, and uh, uh, where we can uh, start to understand targets like this potential target that we're looking at here at this um, uh, 54 uh, and um, uh, three quarters. Okay, so absorption, and then uh, we're, we're maybe potentially getting a flip here in the order flow. Okay, maybe some more sellers starting to come in, and they're looking to transact. Here's here's where there's liquidity. It's down in this area here. So now you've got uh, understanding of what's going on in the marketplace and why price might be uh, reacting in specific areas. Okay. All right. So any questions? No, if not, uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at, um, Oh, we can start to look at some of the uh, uh, structure and order flow uh, here, or or we can go over some more more features as well. Uh, there's just this is so feature rich. There's so many different things to look at uh, that um, uh, you know you can filter your volume, for example. You and there's ways of clustering uh, and filtering that volume, uh, as well as um, uh, looking for exact sizes of volume to trade. Uh, that uh, that maybe that works uh, for your uh, type of trading, okay? So uh, you look at look what we were just witnessing here, and look at the sell-off that just occurred and hit hit now this target here of 54.75. Okay, now why did I have insight to that potential, uh, uh, you know, to this area to trade? Okay, it's because of what occurred up here in this area. Okay, we saw the high liquidity. We saw the aggressiveness of it. We saw that they, there, you can you can you can look right at it, and you can see how it traded into these areas here, uh, and it transacted. Okay, so uh, these areas were absorbed, uh, and um, uh, then we uh, we can see that the aggressive buyers uh, they they basically um, uh, didn't show up in some of these other areas. Okay, we get a retest here, and you get very little. Uh, aggressive buying and nothing here as you can see and uh, very little here and then we start to notice uh, clusters of volume starting to trade at lower areas a little bit of a, a um, insight was here uh, as well but uh, you know I mean I, I still I like to see the structure broken first uh, and then I like to see that uh, continuation to the downside yeah let me show you how to uh, filter for the uh, the clusters uh, and the uh, accumulative volume delta down here in the sub sub chart. Okay. Um, so, uh, all right. First thing, let's click on the studies configuration here, uh, and then we'll click on the volume dots. Uh, and there's ways of clustering your volume here. The dot clustering. All right. So, 
First, uh, we can have with no clustering whatsoever. It's going to show every single trade event, okay? Uh, and then uh, we can use a, the smart clustering, but let me let me go through time and volume first. Okay. So now I've got it set up for every single minute uh, to display uh, a volume dot. Actually, let me go to five minutes and we'll put it right on that candle. Okay, so you can see now the overall delta of the volume within this five minute period here. You can see the rather even in this case. Okay, so the aggressive buying on the upside here countered with the aggressive selling at this point, and it's rather even. Okay, pretty even here as well. A little bit more buying than selling. All right, so that's by time. Uh, now uh, let's uh, go into by volume. So now we can look for specific volume as well. And so let's look for, uh, let's uh, input, um, 50 is not bad. Let's input 75 and let's zoom in. Okay, so now I've chosen 75. So when 75 contracts have traded, paint a new dot and give me the overall delta. So you can see these are all the same size, all these dots. Uh, and um, uh, it, it's not based on time, it's based on volume. So you can see that there's a pretty big lag here between these two volume dots. Uh, but in some of these areas over here, you can see that a lot of volume traded really quickly. Okay, so it gives you some insight to some of the speed that is uh, is trading uh, as well. All right, so the structure, or I'm sorry, the um, dot clustering for smart volume, Okay. This is a combination of both time and uh, by volume. And uh, we're just giving you the uh, kind of, a, it has a, a, a kind of a sliding filter here as well. So let me open that again. And that is this sliding filter here. Okay. So uh, the way it's working is it's starting to, it has kind of like a circle of influence around it uh, and um, uh, looking for uh trying to cluster uh, important trading activity based on time and volume, okay? So you're just getting, you, you're getting a, a kind of a, a, a bigger picture or, uh, you know, kind of an, it's not aggregated, but it's just, um, uh, it's starting to give you the significant volume that traded uh, within that time uh, and, uh, and volume period. All right, so that's, uh, that's one way to do it here. Uh, there are other filters as well. Uh, looking at minimum accountable dot size and trade size. Let me just go over minimum accountable trade size. For those of you who look for block trades, you can also filter for those. Okay, so I just uh, selected 10. And uh, anywhere on this chart where there was a volume, a trade act, uh, event for a volume of 10 or more. And you can see the NASDAQ is not a very good example, uh, but I only see one over here. Uh, and I see a couple buys down here, okay? Uh, so uh, not, not the greatest example, but it's either gonna be 10 or more. If I hover over the dot using the tooltip, uh, you can see that it says volume of 19 here on the last line, okay? This was a pretty big trade. This was, <laughs> this was uh, for 104, all right? So uh, that's how you can filter for block trades if that's what you wanna look at. Okay, and um, so you might want to look at something a little less here today, at least in the NASDAQ, and uh, and filter for uh, uh, the um, uh, maybe less, like five. And still really not giving you much insight. All right, so let's bring that down to one, and let's go back to our smart, back to, back to restore. All right, there we go. Okay, well, that's the uh, the filtering. Um, and uh, let's go over the CVD here, as you can see. So uh, we have a uh, uh, indicator panel, as you can see, and uh, this is showing you the cumulative volume delta. Okay, it's a really simple, um, it's very insightful uh, indicator, but it's actually quite simple. Uh, it, it's just taking all of the trade activity here, and uh, if it's a, uh, a market buy order, it's a positive number, uh, and then let's say the next trade that takes place, uh, uh, well, the first trade that took, pl took place was for 10 contracts and it was a market buy. Let's say the next uh, trade event that takes place is uh, market sell for eight. So 
the cell would be negative, the overall cumulative volume delta at that point would be 10 minus 8, so it would be positive 2. And that's all it does, and it just plots it. Okay, now we have some uh, pretty nice uh, features for that though. Uh, there are different ways. You can click on studies configuration and we can go to cumulative volume delta. Uh, we, you can have multiple cumulative volume delta show. Let's just show this one here. Uh, and um, uh, you can filter for specific sizes if you like. Uh, and um, uh, you can also uh, have a range here to study for the chart range or the session range. So for I have it set for chart range, which means that within this viewable chart range, it's giving me and calculating the cumulative volume delta. If I go to session range, you'll see it change here. Okay, and now it's since when I opened up my book map and it then it started to uh, uh, create a uh, cumulative volume delta. You, you can also, uh, you can split out the, um, uh, the aggressor, okay, by, uh, you can see now I have buyers and sellers. Uh, and uh, you can also uh, uh, click here and make a, a reference point, all right, so for a reset. So let's, uh, let's do a reset right now and you'll see what happens. Okay, so I just clicked here and it, and it records exactly when I reset it. You can input your own values as well. Like if you wanted to put in 930 for the cash open, uh, then uh, it would reset exactly at 930. So but since I clicked on reset now, you can see that uh, it zeroed right after I reset it. Okay, and it's starting again. All right, so uh, all sorts of nice features here. Uh, Let's uh, get rid of that one here. Uh, let's go back to our chart range. And there's a cumulative volume delta two that I also have set up. And I've filtered this one, all right? And I filtered it for uh, looking for um, a minimum of 10, all right? And that's ter in terms of the volume size. So I'm, I'm looking for the larger players in this uh, study. Okay, and this is gonna be a blue line. Now I, I need to also come down here and I need to activate this here. So I'll just click on the cumulative volume delta two study here. Uh, and I can also click on the widget panel and it'll show here, right? And you can see the difference here. So a big difference between the two, right? Now 10 might be a little much here for today uh, in the NASDAQ, but uh, uh, I'm looking at all traders here with the, um, uh, the cumulative volume, the CVD, and then the CVD two is looking for the larger players. How are they positioning themselves? All right. Okay, so uh, that's uh, uh, going over a few of the features. Uh, there are many more. All right. We have um, uh, automated uh, trading strategies that are available up here. Uh, you can trade right from the bookmap chart as well, and we can uh, uh, activate some of these um, uh, algorithms here that come with bookmap. Okay. So if you have any questions on that, let me know. Uh, otherwise, uh, as time is up here, we need to get to the uh, the next webinar. And let me give you the link uh, so you can uh, you can join in uh, for this next webinar. Okay, hold on just a moment. Okay, now uh, another note here, uh, this is the, uh, I'm going to put it in the chat, there you go, it's in the chat box and you'll see the link. Um, this is the uh, the last webinar for, uh, uh, and we're, we're taking a, a bit of a, uh, uh, a holiday break now and we'll come back after Labor Day uh, on the 7th of September, okay, so that's uh uh, so not, not until then will we have another webinar. All right. So, uh, just taking a, a bit of a break. So, uh, enjoy your, uh, your holidays and, uh, and then we'll see you back on the seventh. All right. So, uh, you have the link for the next webinar. Uh, I'll see you there.